Welcome to Midwest Sportsnet. I'm Joey McWilliams. It is my privilege today to get to visit with the head football coach at Emporia State, Coach Garen Higgins, in his 14th season with the program. Coach, the Hornets are playing in the postseason again, and I know that you all are no stranger to the postseason with what you've been able to do at the program there. This is the fourth time in six seasons to get to make it to the postseason back in a bowl game this year, as you all will be playing in the Live United Bowl in Texarkana, Arkansas on Saturday. Congratulations, Coach, on making it to the postseason again. You bet. Thank you. Uh, we are excited about playing in the postseason again. Uh, you know, going into this year, I didn't know if I didn't know if we were going to be any good or not. I really didn't because, of course, we didn't we didn't play the year before. And all we've done was was practice against each other. You know, of course, we had a couple scrimmages in the spring, but. Uh, you know, we're excited about playing uh, in the Live United Bowl. I think it's been up to this point, it's been it's been awesome. It's been first class. Um, they have done a great job. And I know that our players, um, you know, our coaches and, and uh, you know, even our band cheerleaders, everybody's everybody is is uh, looking forward to playing the game. You'll be taking on Southeastern Oklahoma State in the Live United Bowl, coming in from the Great American Conference. You all finished fifth in the MIAA this year, six and five, the overall record, ups and downs over the course of the season. I think there's no question about that. Can you take us through the year a bit? Oh, man, it's a roller coaster ride. Um, but, uh, you know, we started off the, like I said beforehand, I, I didn't really know what we were going to have. Uh, I knew that we had a lot of veterans back. Uh, defensively, start with Jace McDown, our, our all-conference linebacker. But, you know, offensively, we had really struggled in 2019 and uh, really had, I would say, uh, not a big question mark, but a question mark at quarterback. Um, so, and then we had the two scrimmages and coming out of the spring, I mean, we got, I, I felt like that in both those scrimmages, granted it is a scrimmage, but if you, if you would have said, did you win or lose, I would have said we lost. <laughs> you know, so, uh, so again, I didn't know what we had, but I, I, one thing that we, I felt like we did have here was good leadership. And I felt like we got a good group of guys, a good group of young men that care about one another. And, uh, we started out the year two and zero, oh, and then it was, uh, man, it was, you know, we were up in, against Missouri Western 28 to seven. I hate reliving some of this stuff now, but, <laughs> and they came back in the second half and, and, uh, took the lead on us and then we had to put a drive together to go and tie it. And we did that. And then I went for two. I felt like that's what we needed to do. We didn't have much of the momentum. We were on the road and, you know, we just missed, I mean, it's that call could have went either way. You know, we ran a little, uh, pick route to the tailback and he touched the pylon, but he stepped out at the same time. So we ended up losing that game. Uh, then we had a very close game against Pittsburgh State where we got down and we came back and we ended up putting a drive together to close it to two points and went for the onside kick, didn't get it. I thought our kids played hard. They battled. You know, that's a tough place to win at on the road. And then <clears throat> we beat Washburn, uh, which is a big win for us. You know, we were up 35 to 10 on them, got some turnovers in that game, which definitely helped. Um, but that was a, that was a kind of a get back game for us, you know, kind of to get us back kind of going in the right direction. And then we, Carney came to town and, um, at the time, I think they were maybe had lost one game. That's it. But, uh, we're, we're at the top of the league in the standings, you know, we were up on them 21 to seven. We had the ball inside the one yard line with, less than two minutes to go before halftime inside the one and we, we didn't get it in. So, and I, I was like, well, we didn't score, but they're going to have to go 99 yards to score against us. Well, guess what they did. So, and that was right before half that hurt us, that, that hit us in the gut. You know, that was a 14 point swing basically right there. We could have very well been up 28 to seven going into halftime against Carney, you know, and again, that's a playoff team. Uh, and then we ended up getting beat by, I think, a touchdown. Uh, we ended up getting the onside back, had a chance. Just we couldn't put a drive together there to, to take the lead. Uh, but that was another close game that we lost. So uh, then we came back, <clears throat> and we had a great road win out at Fort Hayes. 
it's a tough place to win out there. And we were down 15, uh, we were down, uh, let's see, 12 to zero. And we scored 15 points in a matter of five minutes, six minutes, basically, to win that game. Uh, and that was a big win for us. And then we came back, beat Missouri Southern. And then the last game of the year uh, we played, I felt like one of the best teams in the country right now, the way they're playing Northwest Missouri. And, you know, they, they beat us. They beat us. You know, that wasn't yeah. a close game. It didn't come down to an onside kick. It didn't come down to one drive. It came down to we got beat. And uh, but uh, I'm very proud of our players because it had, was a roller coaster ride a little bit. Lost a lot of close games where we could have folded our tent. You know, sometimes when you lose some close games like that, that you know you have some things maybe not go your way. You got guys that get frustrated and they let it affect the team, and it never did for us. You know, we uh, we stuck together, and like I said before the season, I knew we had good leadership and a great group of young men, a uh, great group of seniors that decided to come back super seniors, as you know, and uh, we just, you know, we're, we're de- down in the dumps after that Northwest Missouri game, and then we got a phone call saying that we may have an opportunity to play in a bowl game. Would you be interested? And there's no question. I mean, I was going to be interested. I thought our players deserved it. I felt like that, uh, you know, we didn't get to play a game in 2020, so why not get an opportunity to go play again? And uh, so so we were, we were, we were excited and, and – and now it's here. <clears throat> now it's finally got into game week this week, and we're looking forward to the game. We're speaking now with Coach Garen Higgins from Emporia State. And, Coach, you were talking about a, a number of players there. Let's go ahead and start with the offense. Uh, maybe a question before, but uh, quarterback in Braden Gleason, he's come in and led the team for you well this year and continuing now to climb up the Hornet record books. Uh, he, he's getting his name in, in some of those lists as well. So tell us ab- about your offense and, and how they look. <clears throat> Well, that was, a, like you said, that was a question mark coming into the year. And the thing <clears throat> thing about it, I think, that paid huge dividends for Braden is he was able to practice in 2020, even though we didn't play very play any games, uh, he was able to get better. He was able to really grasp the offensive system. And uh, he's a coach's son. He understands the game. He wants to be a football coach. And I think he got better from that. <clears throat> and then when in the scrimmages, I felt like he didn't play very well. But he only played a quarter, you know, in both those spring scrimmages. So he never really was able to get into a rhythm. And then um, – but it helped him. And then he came – then starting the fall season, you know, he, he just started off really well. You know, he protects the football. Uh, you know, he understands that there's been some very good quarterbacks that have played here uh, in the last <clears throat> 10 years. And, uh, you know, it's all about winning games uh, to him, but he also understands it. He likes being in that group of guys that have set a lot of records here at Emporia State. So uh, he's tough. He's a tough individual. And uh, it's it's been awesome to see him kind of grow, you know, and to get better. Um, and I think there's still so much room for improvement. You know, he throws, he throws an accurate ball, but he's also one of those players that can get you out of trouble with his feet. And he understands when he needs to go down to protect himself. That's a big deal, Coach. It's nice to have a quarterback with wisdom like that, I'm, I'm sure. Right, and if he and doesn't that... understand it, definitely the message is brought to him uh, <laughs> like a pass rusher. <laughs> well, we're speaking now with Coach Garen Higgins here on the Summit, and uh, we're on Midwest Sports Net. I encourage you please to consider subscribing to the channel. We talk about small college sports in the Midwest and beyond. And, Coach, uh, your defense as well. Three of the linebacker core, you already mentioned one of them, three of the linebacker core got all MIAA recognition. And so I, it looks like the defense, it's a, a good start right there. <clears throat> yeah, no question. That, uh, as I said, before the season started, we knew going into it that that was a veteran unit. And, uh, you know, they led us in 2019. And those three linebackers, anytime you can return three linebackers that have that type of experience in this league, uh, it's a it's bonus for you. And, uh, you know, I think that there's been times where maybe we hadn't played the best defensively, uh, but there's also been times that we have played at a very high level. And uh, <clears throat> hopefully that's kind of where we're at right now. And you're right, it starts with those three guys. And those guys, you know, you know, start with Jace McDown. I mean, he he's a captain. Uh, Dawson Hamas is a captain, you know, so two out of three of those linebackers are, are team captains for us. 
And uh, they're the leader of the defense. You know, Jace is the Mike backer. He's the guy that gets everybody lined up and very similar to the quarterback on offense. And, uh, you know, those guys, those guys play really hard and they're physical and they're tough. Uh, the biggest thing that we've had to, I feel like, get better at and work on improving is just keeping everything in front of us and not giving up the big play. That's kind of been our Achilles heel a little bit. And, you know, like I said, there's times where we have gotten better in that area and there's times that we have it. Coach, uh, one of the player I do want to mention, and this is news that's pretty much hot off the presses right now as we speak here, talk about Ross Rungard, your punter, an all-region punter, averaging 44 yards per punt over the course of this season. And I know that's you were talking about uh, the quarterback knowing when to uh, to help get, get himself out of trouble. I'm sure having a punter like that can get you out of a little bit of trouble as well. <clears throat> no question. He's had – Let's see, uh, probably over 50-yard punts, I want to say, oh, uh, 18, somewhere right around there, punts over 50 yards. And he's got a great leg. You know, he's got long levers. You know, he's the tallest punter I've ever had, and I've been coaching for a long time. He's about 6'3". Uh, he's flipped the field so many times for us. Uh, he's been huge in games that we've won. You know, the Washburn game is one that comes to mind to me as far as the times he's he's been able to flip the field. Uh, sometimes the only thing that he and, – and, hey, it's very well-deserved for Ross to become – to get that all-region pick. I mean, it's very well-deserved for him because, you know, he's a player that, you know, if you think about your punters and your kickers, I'm always one of those guys that I don't care how much weight they're lifting. I just want to make sure that they're kicking the ball through the uprights or they're able to cough and corner it or get the ball, you know, flip the field on a punt. But – uh, Ross works really hard. You know, he was committed like <clears throat> our team was this summer and was here basically every day in the summer working out with the guys. So that tells you a little bit about his mindset. So uh, he's been a great asset for us. And, uh, you know, we're going to need to – that's going to be huge for us going into this bowl game is we're going to have to play very well on special teams. Coaches, we wrap up our time here talking about uh, the Hornets and looking forward to the Live United Bowl that's coming up on Saturday. Your opponent is Southeastern Oklahoma. Interestingly enough, the two programs have never met on the field in an official game. However, I mean, it's been just not even 12 months since you all got together and had some time to scrimmage together and get to, you know, face off against someone wearing a different color jersey through all that wasn't during the COVID year. You got a chance to, to get some time on the field against Southeastern in the spring. Yeah, that was, and that, and, and Coach Fenwick was, was awesome during that time. And uh, I know him, you know, he used to be in the MIAA, so we have a little bit of a relationship there, but, you know, and I've always known uh, who he was, got a lot of great respect for him. And I remember getting an email, I would say sometime in the fall, maybe December, late November, that he was interested in looking for a scrimmage. And then I, I got through the Christmas break and then reached out to him to see if he'd be interested in it. And we had first talked about meeting somewhere halfway, like at NEO, junior college. Uh, and then it ended up that we were going to do it at our place. And, and uh, he's done a great job there. You know, I mean, those guys were, I think, maybe won one game in 2019 or maybe zero. I don't know. But, I, yeah, one game. And he's, they've done a great job. One. Yeah, it tells you. And they kicked our rear end, you know, up here in the scrimmage. So we didn't, we didn't play, we didn't perform very well. And, uh, you know, it was a victory for them. And, and uh, uh, they're a good, very, very good football team. You want to think about the, I talked a little bit about uh, our roller coaster ride and all the close games we lost. We'll, we'll look at their schedule. You know, they beat two ranked teams uh, first off. And then they've, the games they've lost were total 11 points somewhere right around in there. So like, Hey, they, they've had closer games than us. So it's going to be a big test for us. And, um, you know, but I do know that our players are looking forward to it. And I know their players are, you know, they're hungry. You know, uh, I've been uh, in Coach Fenwick's shoes before where back in 2012, where it was the first time we were going to have an opportunity to play in a bowl game. We thought it was like the national championship, you know, I mean, first time being in the postseason. So I know that it's huge for their program and I know their kids will be ready to play. And we got a lot of, <clears throat> great respect for what they have done and what they've been able to accomplish. And, um, you know, it's going to be be a very good football team. We're going to have to play very well to win the football game. 
Well, it should be a lot of fun, and we look forward to getting to see that. I'm I'm going to to enjoy. I get to be there actually as a part of that on Saturday. So I'm I'm looking forward to it, Coach. And and uh, just then again, generally speaking, and I know you you don't want to to, to give too much away, but uh, in in order to win this game, it's a a, a a great matchup. What does it take? for Emporia State to come down to Texarkana and to win the ballgame? Well, I, I'm going to go back on my experience in playing in bowl games. And uh, I think it's how you prepare. Like, I know our kid, our players will be ready to play. There's no question. You know, you just don't know how they're going to perform after three weeks of not playing, you know, and understanding what the, the speed of the game, e- even though it's three weeks, you know, you want to make sure that, their conditioning stays, uh, you know, that they stay in condition. Uh, you know, we've we've got after it pretty good uh, these three weeks. I know our guys are tired of practicing and they're ready to go play a game. Uh, I think for us to to win a game is we're going to have to not give up the big play. Like I said, that earlier has been something that's been Achilles' heel for us, and I think. Uh, just how we start the game is going to be important, uh, you know, getting off to a good start. Uh, and, of course, as always, protecting the football, you know, and and we got beat. We lost the game that I feel like we should have won this year against Central Missouri. We had six, seven turnovers that game, you know, and I think we got beat by, I don't know, three points somewhere right around in there. So, you know, we're going to have to protect the football, and then we're also going to have to, you know, play really well on special teams. So we got to get our rhythm back, um, you know, as far as, like like I said, not playing for three weeks. So we're going to have to knock some of that rust off and and uh, play with good pace offensively and and be very physical on defense. All right. Well, it's a new kickoff on Saturday, the first Saturday in December in Texarkana, Arkansas, as Emporia State will be taking on Southeastern Oklahoma in the Live United Bowl. Coach Garen Higgins, thank you so much. We appreciate your time today. Success to you all and to the Hornets as your season continues. And thank you for being with us here on Midwest Sports Net. You bet. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it.